Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, we're taking a look at the ASRock B660M HDV because ASRock's at it yet again, misleading consumers with garbage products. Now, if you missed it, last year we purchased the ASRock B560M HDV for some testing and found that it failed to run a number of 11th gen core series processors at the minimum specification, despite advertising support. In short, the board enforced a hard PL1 of 100 watts, which massively limited performance, resulting in significantly worse results than boards priced just 10 to $20 more. The horrible performance aside though, our primary issue with this product was the false advertising, as it failed to meet the minimum specification of the 125 watt CPUs it claimed to support. Now, while ASRock was entirely responsible for producing the B560M HDV and misleading consumers in the process, we also blamed Intel for failing to properly define their power specification. Intel has since made some attempts to solve this problem, though sadly they've only done so for their 12th gen KSKU processors, where PL1 now equals PL2, meaning the default behavior for K-series parts is to run at the maximum turbo power. Non-K parts on the other hand, like the Core i7-12700, which are technically 65 watt parts, but also not really, still suffer from a loosely defined spec, which can see them clock as low as 2.1 gigahertz on the P cores for AVX accelerated workloads. Though without power limits, should maintain an all core frequency of about 4.5 gigahertz, which is a 114% increase over the base frequency. This means the 12700 can operate at 65 watts or at 150 watts or perhaps even a bit more depending on the power limits and in our testing this has seen performance vary by as much as 70% depending on the board used. Unsurprisingly the worst B660 motherboard that we've come across so far is once again ASRock's HDV. The B660 MHDV is, there's really no other way to put it, it's atrocious, even worse than the B560 model if you can believe that. To my complete amazement, rather than improve, ASRock has decided to go the other way, limiting the B660M HDV to a PL1 of just 95 watts, while still advertising support for 125 watt parts. By default, the board has a PL1 limit of 65 watts and a PL2 of 126 watts, but remember the PL2 is a temporary boost state, and in this case, after just 28 seconds, the board reverts to PL1. And this is the case even when using 125 watt K SKU parts, which will run at 65 watts for all core workloads that exceed a duration of 28 seconds. And that is assuming that the VRM doesn't reach its thermal limit in that time and throttle the CPU anyway. The PL2 limit can't be increased beyond 126 watts, and in fact, any manual input here will cap the power limit to 95 watts. The PL1 on the other hand, which as I said earlier is 65 watts out of the box, can only be set as high as 95 watts, meaning the maximum power limit configuration for this board is 95 watt PL1 and 126 watt PL2 for up to 28 seconds. Why this is a problem for a board that advertises support for 125 watt parts is because the PL1 target needs to be at least 125 watts, not 95 watts. The Core i9-12900K, for example, has a minimum clock frequency target of 3.2 GHz, which it can sustain during all core workloads. Anything less than that is out of spec. Now, whether or not anyone would pair a board like the ASRock B660M HDV with a Core i9-12900K is entirely beyond the point. Frankly, it's unlikely anyone would, but that doesn't make false advertising okay. You can't claim to support anything you can't run within spec. And let's take a look at how the B660M HDV supports the 12900K. Before we get into the graphs though, let's talk about the test conditions. For this testing and any future LJ1700 VRM thermal testing, I've built a dedicated system inside the Corsair IQ7000X case. Powering it, we have the HX1000 power supply and for cooling the Corsair IQ-H170i Elite Capelix. The IQ7000X has been configured with a single rear 140mm exhaust fan and then three 140mm intakes, so the stock configuration for that case. Then in the top we have the H170i 420mm radiator with three 140mm exhaust fans, and this is a pretty high-end configuration, I'd say airflow is very good, and in a 21 degree room I'd certainly say this is an optimal setup, which we're going to call standard airflow. 
Now for this testing, I also have a direct airflow configuration, which includes an additional 120 millimeter fan covering the VRM. This is without question an absolute best case scenario for any system. I'd say most people don't do this, so it's not really a realistic configuration, but I wanted to give these budget boards the best chance possible of actually working. For recording temperatures, I'm using a digital thermometer with K-type thermocouples, and I'll be reporting the peak rear PCB temperature. Finally, I'm not reporting delta T over ambient, instead I maintain a room temperature of 21 degrees, and to ensure a consistent ambient temperature, a thermocouple is positioned next to the test system. As for the stress test, I'm using Cinebench R23, which has been looped for an hour, at which point I'm reporting the maximum PCB temperature, again recorded using a K-type thermocouple, and I'm reporting the final Cinebench score as well. Finally, for comparison with the ASRock B660M HDV, I've included the Soyo B660M Classic, which costs the same amount of money, and then we have the slightly more expensive MSI Pro B660M-A. Starting with the standard airflow test, we see that the B660M HDV heavily throttled the 12900K in both test configurations. With the 65 watt limit, the CPU averaged a clock frequency of just 2.42 gigahertz, and at 95 watts, that increased to just 2.54 gigahertz. The reason for the small increase is due to the board's inability to maintain a 65 watt output due to thermal throttling, and we were measuring a rear PCB temperature of 104 degrees. This limited the 1200K to a score of just 15,810 points, which meant the MSI Pro B660MA was 71% faster with 27,107 points. The MSI board also managed to achieve this in its out of the box configuration, so no tinkering to the power limits was necessary, though under these test conditions the VRM did peak at 103 degrees, which is very high despite the fact that the VRM didn't throttle, or at least no VRM throttling was detected. Another really cheap B660 board is the Soyo B660M Classic, and stock it has a PL2 limit of 125 watts, but this was enough to see the 1200K average 3.9 GHz in our testing, so well above the 3.2 GHz base spec. The board also ran at just 77 degrees and allowed for a score of 22,084 points, which is a 40% increase over the ASRock board. Unfortunately, removing the power limits on the Soyo board wasn't particularly useful as it did slightly reduce performance overall while increasing the VRM temperature to 101 degrees. So not a great result overall, but it was within spec and miles better than the ASRock board. Now, because the B660M HDV doesn't have any heat sinks, providing direct airflow really is crucial. So that's what we've done here by placing a 120 mm fan over the VRM components. With the stock 65 watt configuration, the 1200K did clock better, this time hitting three gigahertz, which is still below the 3.2 gigahertz minimum specification for our nine processors. The direct airflow did improve the 65 watt score by 13%, but even so, the MSI Pro B660M-A was still 55% faster. Now, increasing the PL1 limit to 95 watts, which is the maximum setting allowed by the B660M HDV, the score was increased by 17% to 20,674 points. And more crucially, the average clock speed reached 3.56 GHz, which is above the minimum specification. So if you use the B660M HDV in a 21 degree environment, in a well ventilated case with a 120 millimeter fan strapped directly over the VRM and increase the PAL1 to its maximum value, the board does technically run the 1200K just above the minimum specification. So if you happen to deem that as a pass, well, so be it. But when compared to similarly priced boards such as the Soyo B660M Classic, the B660M HDV is just a bad joke. For example, the Soyo board managed a score of 22,353 points out of the box with direct airflow, making it 8% faster than the 95 watt configuration for the B660M HDV, and then 25% faster with the power limits removed. The Soyo board did still throttle the 1200K down to 227 watts, but performance overall was acceptable. The ASRock B660M HDV really doesn't support the Intel Core i9-12900K and shouldn't list 125 watt support on the website. I just feel that that is extremely misleading given under normal conditions it doesn't come close to achieving the minimum specification and performance is miles off where it should be. But 
How does it go with a more realistic CPU configuration using the locked Core i7-12700? Let's go find out. Using our standard airflow configuration, which I feel is a realistic optimal airflow setup, let's say, we again see some serious performance discrepancies. The ASRock B660 MHDV limited the 12700 to an average clock speed in our hour long test to just 2.6 gigahertz. Using the stock 65 watt configuration, as well as our manual 95 watt setting. And this limited performance to around 12,900 points. And that's really bad because this CPU running at its base 65 watt spec should score around 15,400 points as seen on the MSI Pro B660M-A, resulting in an average clock frequency of three gigahertz. And the MSI board managed this with a VRM temperature of just 46 degrees. Meanwhile, the ASRock board ran up at around 100 degrees for a much worse result. Even the similarly priced Soyo B660M Classic was worlds better, and interestingly, ran at 125 watts out of the box, where it scored 18,917 points, with a VRM temperature of just 77 degrees. The Soyo board wasn't quite able to fully unlock the performance of the 12700 with the power limits manually removed as it did thermal throttle at 101 degrees, but even so, performance was still almost 60% higher than what we saw with the ASRock board. The 12700 can technically run as low as 2.1 GHz and still remain in spec, which is why the Intel spec for 65 watt parts is still just a joke. So technically speaking, ASRock isn't falsely advertising support for this part despite being significantly slower than boards like the MSI Pro B660M-A. With the aid of direct airflow, the B660M HDV did perform a lot better and was now able to deliver the expected level of performance at the 65 watt spec. However, using the 95 watt power limit, this saw an average clock frequency of just 3.15 gigahertz across the hour long test, resulting in a score of 18,446 points, which is 16% lower than that of the MSI Pro B660M-A, which also happened to run significantly cooler. Again, the Soyo B660M Classic proved to be a much better quality product, which not only ran much cooler, but also provided 20% greater performance. Finally, I ran all the tests again using the Core i5-12600K, which lowers the package power rating to around 130 to 140 watts. In our standard airflow test, the ASRock board clocked the 12600K to 3.46 gigahertz using the stock configuration. Meanwhile, increasing the PL1 to 95 watts broke the board by introducing heavy VRM throttling, which resulted in lower overall performance. It's worth noting that the minimum clock specification for the 12600K is 3.7 GHz, so the B660 MHDV has again failed to achieve the minimum spec for a 125 watt part. With a score of just 13,623 points for the ASRock board, the Soyo and MSI boards were over 25% faster, with scores in excess of 17,000 points. And they did this while keeping VRM temperatures below 80 degrees, or just 61 degrees in the case of the MSI board. Increasing the airflow with a 120mm fan placed directly over the VRM, the B660M HDV still wasn't able to get the most out of the 12600K due to the hard 95 watt power limit. Out of the box, the ASRock board enforced a 65 watt PL1, which reduced the average clock frequency to just 3.46 GHz, resulting in a score of 13,522 points after the hour long loop. At 95 watts, that score was increased to 15,705 points, and here the VRM peaked at 70 degrees, which is much higher than what we saw from the likes of MSI and Soyo. For those of you wondering, I did install the Core i5-12400, and as expected, it was limited to a PL1 of 65 watts out of the box. Now, running the standard airflow configuration, the VRM of the B660M HDV peaked at 91 degrees. No VRM throttling was detected, and performance was pretty well as expected. So I'd say this is the limit of the ASRock board, unless you're willing to stick a fan directly over the VRM components, and of course maintain a room temperature of 21 degrees. So in a nutshell, we believe that ASRock is at best misleading consumers with the B660M HDV, and at worst, falsely advertising the board's capabilities. As I said, when looking at the B560M HDV, if ASRock didn't list compatibility with 125 watt parts and instead called it the 
well, this board, the B660M HDV65W, then we'd take far less issue with the product. As it stands, the only disclaimer ASRock provides is the following. For cooling the CPU and its surrounding components, please install a CPU cooler with a top-down blower design. CPU performance may be limited due to power phase design. Now, you could claim we didn't follow their guidance by not using the box cooler, but I don't see how that changes the fact that a 95 watt PL1 means it's impossible to run parts like the 1200K within the base spec. We also tested in a high-end case with high-end cooling, so using the box cooler, which blows hot air from the CPU over the VRAM components, wouldn't exactly help much here, especially if you were to do so in a budget case with maybe just a single 120mm fan. ASRock does also say that CPU performance may be limited due to power phase design, but that's extremely vague and doesn't get them off the hook for failing to meet the minimum specification required to support 125 watt processors. Also again, this isn't made clear enough and could be indicated via the product name by including 65W for example. Ideally though, we'd rather boards like this simply didn't exist, and Soyo's proven that it's possible to produce a B660 board at this price range that isn't hot garbage. Alternatively, I highly recommend spending the extra $45 or so to get the MSI Pro B660M-A, which is a vastly superior product in every conceivable way, and once you factor in the cost of the CPU, that $45 difference becomes rather insignificant. The goal here for us is to expose bad products like the ASRock B660M HDV so you don't end up buying it and you can also advise friends to avoid it. But ultimately, we'd like to discourage companies like ASRock from making terrible products and really that should be their goal anyway because boards like this serve only to burn consumers and ASRock's reputation in return. All of that said, I'm Pretty well now fully expecting the B760M HDV to have a PL1 of 80 watts because ever since ASRock blacklisted us along with Gamers Nexus and actually hardcore overclocking in 2020, it's been all downhill from there. I'm also hoping that the ASRock B660M HDV is the worst of the worst when it comes to B660 motherboards, but I do have around 20 boards on hand and you'll see all of those results very shortly, probably later this week, so make sure you stay tuned for that. There are some very interesting results there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, there's that. You can also subscribe because as I said, we do have a lot of B660 testing coming up on the channel very shortly. And if you'd like to support our work, then please check out our Floatplane and Patreon accounts. It does help support boards, well, content like this for buying boards such as these. I think we bought about half of the boards that we have for the B660 Roundup. So quite a bit of money spent on some very substandard motherboards. Anyway, Floatplane Patreon, as I said, you will also get access to our exclusive Discord server. So you can chat with Tim and myself and the rest of the awesome Harbour Box community there. We do live streams each month for the members and we have behind the scenes content and Q&A. So yeah, check that out if you're interested. But if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.